So in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at doing some procedurally driven static electricity. This has to be done in 3ds Max 2024.2 because of the new and exciting feature that was added called uh, Conform. This is a fantastic new modifier that made this possible. And uh, this is really, really simple to make and it's really effective the way it works. So let's get started with replicating the, uh, the static electricity. I'm just gonna turn on the grid here. Uh, maybe just go to the top viewport to, to generate a line to start with. So I'm gonna uh, turn on snap um, or, or 3D snap, or of course, um, shift right click into grad uh, snap settings if you like, and make sure that's on. So we have grid settings turned on. Um, we can make what we're about to make in any real way we want um, as far as the line goes, but I like to keep it nice and straight. So I'm just going to make a line. That line is going to have two points. Um, and uh, I'll just do it from there to there. So it's going to have two points, any length, but I want it in a straight line. It just makes kind of the most sense. You'll see why in a second. Turn my snap back off and that's it. Uh, effectively, we're done. That is the uh, amount of uh, work we need to do to make this work. I'm going to turn on enable rendering and I'm going to call it radial. And we're going to have, uh, which I think is on by default, I'm going to make it nice and small. Sides, we probably only need three. Okay, you know, you, you may as well keep it really low. There's real no need for anything else. Um, the interpolation, we can turn right down as well. You'll find out why in a second on that one too. And, uh, um, you know, optimize really doesn't matter in this case. But uh, we don't need any extra segments. It's going to be, they're going to be generated for us. So right now we have essentially a line that's just a little tiny tube. You know, again, maybe if you wanted five sides or something, you know, make sure it's smoothed all the way around. Um, you know, I'm just going to leave it as three because, I mean, it glows anyway. So you're, it isn't like you're ever going to see it. Um, and let's just move that into something on my, uh, on my model here so we can see it kind of work between between things right off the bat. I'm going to get it to skip between some pieces here. So I'm going to move it down here and maybe just rotate it to start with. So I'm going to get some static electricity between these two pieces uh, or multiple, any pieces I want, um, you know, to get started. So to get this to work, I'm just going to add the conform modifier uh, that's been added. And then we just need to pick what we want to conform to. So that can be any objects in here. These are all, these are separate objects. These are all one on here. Um, so I could pick whatever I want to have it conform between and it'll, it'll conform to those, to those items. So to make that happen, we're going to change it to shrink wrap from volume. And we're going to say uh, instead closest point. So it's going to find the closest points. And you can see that it is snapped to those two points because of where it was. If I move this, you'll see it snaps around between the parts on here. And it finds the closest points on the surfaces based on the, uh, the um, you know, length of the line, wherever it originally was. So what's nice is, is you can just kind of move it around randomly to get it to snap between the points that you're looking for and animate it. You can put the animation on a path or whatever. But now let's make this um, look a little more natural. Okay, so uh, we've got our conform on there, but let's first put an array on here. So before a, um, conform, we're gonna add the array modifier. Of course, that's relatively new at this point as well. Um, but we can now go ahead and you know change this up however we want and array these around because we're below the conform. Uh, we should be able to move these around. I'm going to say total dimension. I'm just going to turn off the conform so we can see them. And I can spread these out and I can tell it how many to make. We'll make you know five or six of them or something. Um, I'm then going to do some just randomizing of rotations and everything. So I may as well just lock the rotation, just randomize the rotation a bunch. And I could even go ahead and randomize some position values. And of course, if I turn the array back on, what we're going to see now is that we're kind of skipping between some different locations here. It's all just sort of snapping around between them. Okay, which is really neat. And you can see as we go over to this, it'll snap around onto itself. 
Okay, so that's really cool. We could also in the conform, we could add more um, elements here to snap to. So I'm going to say pick object and maybe pick that sort of outer brass piece and then all of these connecting pieces. Um, and now you'll see it, it snaps to all of this stuff. So it's just jumping around between all of them. So that's because we have two knots in here and that's it well what we need to do is get this thing jumping around making it look like it's electricity so we need more knots in the vertices so that's going to be the normalize spline modifier i'm just going to say show knots so you can see them i'll just go knot count and probably actually 20 the default looks like it's not bad for ones this long you know you could go um, length as well and um, it will basically redraw them. If it jumps and gets longer, it will uh, it will redraw them. So above this, I'm going to add a noise noise modifier, and then we can just kind of crank up this noise modifier and get it working uh, however we want. So I'm just going to throw in some values in here and uh, see what we get when we you know pull the uh, the scale down. maybe something like that. Now, because we have the, um, uh, the, the interpolation set to zero, it is making them um, angular. And that's what we're looking for. Now, if you're up in the um, uh, normalized spline, you could also put on linear segments, which would do the same thing. It would override whatever those steps are, and it would set it up to be like this. So in the noise now, all we need really is to say animated noise. And we've got noise jumping around. Of course, we want to make this, you know, some bright uh, yellow color or whatever. Um, and it would probably be best if it was a material. And, and in this case, I'll just go and grab the material I have on this one here and apply it to the, the one we have selected with A. And I'm just going to hit M again to close that down. And there we've got this lightning and it, it's going to be dancing around for us. So now we just need to animate it. So I'm just going to go from, you know, uh, one end to the other. So why don't we move this down, make it sort of walk its way up here. Turn on animate. Whoops. Turn on animate. And I'm going to move this along. Maybe see if I can get this to jump to the ends of these. Yeah, that looks kind of cool. As they skip around. And that's it. I mean, you've basically got animated, you know, static electricity happening. Now you can tweak that out. It looks a little fat. Animate off. I'm going to go take that, uh, um, you know, size down so it's really narrow. And then you can also play with other things in the array. For instance, you know, randomizing scale values. Now, you know, you can do it in all axes. It won't really matter, but you can actually see it's jumping around more. You could randomize the rotations more. You could randomize the positions more. Um, you know, we can spread them out more. We could even you know, have it come out on multiple different axes and whatever. And we could really, you know, go over the top. I'm just going to turn off as well the show knots so that we don't see them. And now you can see we've got just way too many of them. It looks kind of ridiculous at this point. Um, so I'm going to take that down, back down at what it, what it was. And now you're going to get this really nice effect of it dancing across the surface. So there you have it. I did a little bit more animation on it now. You can see it walking across the surface, passing up, actually animated it, moving up, kind of going through it all, and then moving over sideways. So that's just literally just animating the position uh, of it, and it's going to uh, you know animate for you. There you go.